The second time we see diffusion. So in, and first of all, it's unfair to think about diffusion only uh, thinking about time domain. In frequency domain also we absorb diffusion. But which component? In phase, com in phase component. So, present. so it's, uh, it would be strange to say well, diffusion takes place only in a... But clearly it, it manifests itself both quadrature and phase, but in phase it's very clearly. Because it's a pure diffusion phenomenon. I'm talking about the phase component of secondary field. Now, the second time we see diffusion, when we consider pure transient response. So our transmitter receiver again, uniform medium from the beginning, and I plot graph of electrical field function of time. Now, since it's a tau over r, tau over r, which when I, it shows you two, you can look in this graph from two points of view. Point of one, r is fixed, but this r is fixed. I'm sorry, that's not the r. r is a distance. That's receiver. So, we can look at this graph from two points of view. Point now, you point of view number one. Distance is fixed. So at the beginning, we neglected by displacement current. Electrical field, and that's current density or electrical field, doesn't matter. Increases, reaches maximum, and then disappears. Now, if I increase distance, what would happen? We will have the same graph by shape, by shape, only, only, this maximum will be absorbed later. Okay, so of course, magnitude will be smaller, width will be different, but the same idea at the beginning, nothing. There is intermediate range when we have maximum, and then later, field decreases. And theory shows, theory shows that at the late stage, when tau is greater than r several times, ten times, let us say, ten times, approximately little more, little more, then this behavior has very interesting feature. From point of relation with conductivity, and time. Magnetic field equal, and Duncan yesterday wrote this expression. Slightly different, but it's practically the same. Gamma 3 half, T 3 half. Let us not pay attention to cosine or this number. What is important? At late stage, magnetic field certainly proportional moment, that's no doubts about it. The case unit divide T3 half, that's pure diffusion process. If somebody was involved in nuclear geophysics, would see the same behavior, <coughs> or would absorb diffusion of ions, the same the, the behavior. And what is interesting, proportional conductivity 3 half. As I pointed out, it's very sensitive to change, relatively sensitive to change conductivity. That's one interesting feature which is used, and you will see tomorrow, I'm sure today, and it will show you some curves, I expect, but <coughs> tomorrow I will describe in detail. Now, so please remember, if you have uniform medium, you will have this behavior. What is interesting, if you have uniform half space, the same behavior. If you have trillion medium, the same dependence, but within certain range of time. So again, we are talking about some iron rows. But there is another fact, which of great importance. You remember we spoke about in phase component the dependence of separation. Even I referred you to gravity. 
I don't see I don't see here influence of distance between transmitter and receiver. Where is it? At late stage. No, again, straightforward conclusion. If at late stage, somewhere here, field does not depend on this distance, it means generators of the field are located far, far, Away. That's the essence of diffusion. Uh, now, and now I approaching to very important moment from my point. As geophysicist, I was trained to believe, and, and many of my colleagues up to 70, so I would say up to 71, 69, 68, we believed in West and East, who worked in electromagn electrical electromagnetic methods. If you would like to increase depth of investigation, please increase separation between transmitter and receiver. Classical example, Schlumberger soundings where you have to increase. My teachers, teachers of my teachers, my other teachers, so uh, books, everywhere was only one statement. You would like to increase separation, depth investigation, increase whether you like or not, separation between transmitter and receiver. You can tell uh, what about magnetotelluric method, which I briefly mentioned last time? But this method from the beginning is the method when b distance between receiver and transmitter thousands and thousands kilometers. So there were no any exceptions when this simple formula was derived. Geophysicist instantly realized, uh -huh. here there is, a, there is something which allows to perform soundings regardless of separation between transmitter and receiver. That was breakthrough, literally. I participated this moment life in geophysics, so I do remember how it worked. The trick is, transient method for, for uh, mining prospecting was developed early, in 50s. But idea of soundings between small sep bet when separation between transmitter receiver was small, was not known for 20 years. Even it was very close. It was clear, almost clear, but we were not able to grasp it. And it took 15, 20 years to understand, to understand that since we, there is a diffusion, and we measure field due to currents, and position of these currents is, independ currents is independent when your receiver why we have to took, take huge, huge, huge separation? Let us measure close. I'm talking about soundings. Even, for example, equipment MPPO. It was equipment which was suggested 58, 57. It was, as everybody knows, I, was, I, I knew this moment also very well, because I got patent in time domain with Dr. Willikenhofer. He got Pattern for this system, this method. So we are, uh, we communicated very strongly. I, do I knew about this system, and my colleagues knew there is a transmitter receiver together, but nobody was able to understand at the time. It means depth investigation in time domain does not depend on separation, because receiver was exactly at the same place as transmitter. But still, we believed in the conce great concept of Schlumberger sounding, the great uh, 
separation, the greater death. What is true for Schlumberger? So, <coughs> um, uh, so this formal of uh, behavior of the field uniform medium opens two roles. One role to take into account influence of uh, to understand influence of surrounding medium in mining prospecting. Also, this behavior opens the door to another role, to another scenario, transient sounding. So let me begin from mining. About, let me, since we did, we discuss influence of uh, noise for DC method, measuring quadrature component, measuring in phase, let us discuss about influence of noise in time domain, and then separately it will be discussion about soundings. Behavior of the field in soundings I will show for horizontal layer medium, not for the so now let us look what happens, what happens if we have again have the same medium, half space for instance, we have conductivity one, conductivity two, we have current loop. Physics is almost elementary now. When time is early, uh, uh, small, early stage, currents near surface, no effect. What happens at great, great, great times? Again, the same maximum, no differences in phase component will be far, far away, no effect. So we have to observe effect somewhere and in the middle. Now let us plot graph. G over tau. Again tau. Before I plot omega tau. Now G over tau. Here field due to conductor, due to Nice. It's obvious behavior is again the same as case of in phase component. And this maximum takes place around again tau <coughs> in the range of tau, two, one, depending on parameters. Now <coughs> It's interesting, what is the difference? For example, suppose ratio conductivity 1000, ratio conductivity is gamma 2 my gamma over gamma 1. Suppose the same Z over B, 2, and it's better to do it here. Our conductor, that's Z, that's B radius, C over B2, R L over C1. Now, R L over B, I see, I see some, something wrong. So it turns out, if you remember, in the case of in phase component, Ratio was around 40. Now, around 60. <coughs> Again, better, but not drastically. Not drastically. So, so ratio around 60. If we have system of the conductivities, different models, it's easy to see what would happen 
if conductivity of con time constant conductor increases, graph goes up. <laughs> now, now it's interesting to discuss, since physics is very simple, now let us discuss what happens if I start to change the radius of the loop. So everything is the same, only different uh, radius of the loop. Hmm? Certainly, at early stage, car no field inside. At the late stage, maximum somewhere in the center of the Earth, correct? Or closer, people, far away. Again, window. But what would happen if we start to increase the radius of the loop, or decrease, as usual? Hmm? What do you think? Now. Hmm? It will be let us increase. So what would happen? So influence of geological noise? Huh? About field experience show. Hmm? Increasing. Increasing. So, situation is, let me show you some graphs. I will try to reproduce it. Reproduce. It doesn't matter model very special. No. At all. Doesn't matter. So if I have a graph, just a second. Now, first of all, graph, and then we will discuss. For instance, graph tau, a parameter. It's not good graph. Doesn't let us do as I did before, t over tau. Now, and here, electromotive force. What do we measure? Not magnetic field, electromagnetic rage force due to useful signal U, use of R over F noise. For instance, That's R A over B one. So when you change radius of loop, at the beginning there is no great change. 
again z over b here equal to so instead of 0.5 you can take z.25 if you write a radius of loop over z depth it will be 0.25 here 0.5 so when radius of loop is smaller than depth doesn't practically doesn't matter so when you told doesn't matter I agree with you as soon as you are dealing with loops which are smaller than depth for this model then suppose it's a 60 somewhere around 60 now let me take case 2 in other, well, in other words radius of the loop is equal depth then ratio 2 20 so you in <coughs> increasing radius of the loop greater than depth you start slowly to kill method then you would like to take large loop very large let us take 8. So it means depth 4 times greater than depth. 100 meters depth, 400 meters loop. You expect, aha, uh -huh, I took large loop, so more measurements, so more moment. Don't pay attention to shape of the graph. So I instead of, if it's a 4, z over <coughs> rn over z instead of ratio 60 when practically you don't see geological noise you quickly without changing anything increase make noise comparable to the signal if you increase more you simply kill method you already kill So what remains the same? Remains the same window, the same shape, not the same depth. Same shape window, where you do have maximum anomaly. But in this very important range, very important range, you increasing radius of loop, you decrease, decrease relative contribution of useful signal and vice versa. Now, on another hand, as soon as radius of the loop comparable with depth, further decrease, decrease of radius of the source does not change anything. Now, let us discuss it. Simple evaluation. Simple evaluation. Suppose I have relatively small loop and relatively resistive medium. Resistive doesn't matter, sm relatively small loop. Let us do the following. Let us take Resistivity 20 ohmmeters Rho 1 surrounding medium. Let us take re, uh, radius of loop 100 meters. It's okay? Reasonable? Let us calculate parameter tau and tau over distance. 
first of all, parameter tau. Tau in surrounding medium is equal to pi rho 20 ohmometers to pi rho t 10 7. Is it correct? Now, I would like to find this parameter, 2 pi rho t 10 7. Now, first of all, it will be 10 3, 10 4, I am sorry, 10 4, I made mistake, 10 7 10. Do you agree I can took, I can write 4 approximately, 2 and square root of 4. So parameter tau equal 40,000 times square root of t. Now, for simplicity, let me take time 10 milliseconds. Or how many seconds? 10 minus 2. Is it correct? So therefore, tau 1 over RL is equal for this case. For this case. I took 10 milliseconds for a simple reason. I would like to take square root. That's all without any complications. So we have 4. 10, 4, 10 minus, hmm, 1, divide by 10, 2. So, if I didn't make mistake, we have range of 40. For sure, we are at late stage. For sure, if you remember, I told you tau 1 over r, if more than 10, 15, we are in late stage. Please check me, because easily I can make mistake. So, 40. So, for this moment, we are due at late stage. Now, do we have expression for late stage? We have. So we have this medium 20 ohmometers. We have, by the way, if resistivity 50 ohmometers, it, it will be much, it will be much greater tau, because it's proportional square root of rho. So what we know, approximately, field caused by our body proportional. E t minus tau. True? That's dependence on currents caused by a field caused by currents in confined conductor. And what is the behavior of the field as function of time? Due to noise. Unit divide. T three half. I writing for magnetic field, easily can write the same for electromotive force. That's not the goal now. So let us take ratio. So ratio of our body over noise will be equal proportional T3 half E minus T over tau. Again, we, I don't take into account conductivity, distance, they don't depend on conductivity. It's coefficient proportionality. I would like only to know. <coughs> Behavior of the ratio at the late stage. Now, first of all, do we have heat uh, radius of the loop? Practically no. Correct? Now, uh, what is the behavior of this function? ratio. Hmm? We 
we, do, we don't believe what happens at the beginning, but starting from a certain moment, what would be the behavior of this function? As function of time. Hmm? Exponen de de decrease exponential. Uh -huh. Now, let us do the following. Let us remove this. To remove confusion. Time equals zero. What happens with this term? What happens with this term? One. So ratio equal zero. So if you plot graph, but then with increasing of time, exponent will decay more rapidly than increase of time, and you will get practically correct ratio, correct ratio for this window, part of the window. Now, what happens when size of the loop small? Influence of noise, uh, uh, field due to surrounding medium, in other words, noise, is independent on the distance. If you remember, we wrote expression for field, which at late stage is independent on radius of the loop. So, therefore, influence of the loop disappears in the ratio. Now, when you increase radius of the loop, then what happens for given time? Influence surrounding medium becomes stronger. Is that what happens with our graphs? This fact was discovered very many, many again years, 20, 25, who knows. And again, as I told you in a, as I told you in the case in facing quadrature component, again, when you, what I would do if I was forced to perform some field service now. Um, I have a program for play in free space. It calculates time response very quickly. Plot this graph of the plate in different depths. I have a gra I have a program. You have no time. Programs for calculation transient response due to loop wear in horizontal wear medium. Take bravely these two graphs, two sets of the curves. Divide one by another for different conditions. And you will know that good engineering accuracy, the accuracy which is sufficient for any engineer, can you expect to get useful signal or not? What is approximately depth of investigation in given geoelectrical conditions? But also, it's reasonable to know influence of the radius of the loop in a pure, pure, favorable environment. When you don't take into account galvanic effect charges, when you don't need to take other factors, the main source of anomaly for good conductor induced currents. So take this expression for the field in free space when there is a plate or what, what else? In free space, calculate, take layer medium, overburden, and problem is with good, good accuracy solved. There is no need to perform, it maybe it sounds a little conservative, but from mathematical point of view, it's interesting to solve the forward problem in complicated medium. But I do believe, I don't know cases when it can give better estimation than what this simple engineering approach. One stage, one model, another model, take ratio, you will know what would happen. Now, uh, just a second, one second.
Now let me show you something what I didn't show you. It was unfair. When we have uniform medium, I show you only graph electrical field. And what about magnetic field? Very simple. If behavior of transmitter is turn, step function turn off. That magnetic field divide primary magnetic field. So at the first moment primary field, then decreases, and then goes to the late stage. Now, in effect it has minimum and then goes in this way if we measure outside. If you don't measure outside, measure at the center of the loop, there is no any change of the sign. Now I will start to speak about sound flicks, with your permission. You are not tired? No? Tired? Okay. Only one small, again, comment. Discussing mining prospecting, some aspects of theory of mining prospecting, I wanted to emphasize vital role ratio between useful signal and noise when we compare different methods. So let me show you what happens after our discussion when we spoke about my electrical methods, measurements of quadrature component, frequency method, in phase component, and time domain. Let us summarize. Time domain. Now, here one condition. When I speak about frequency methods, I speak about only range of small parameter. What I'm saying, it's not applied to magnetotelluric method. It's not applied to control source MT. Also, frequency methods you can measure quadrature in phase, it will not help. So, here only to systems where distance between transmitter and receiver comparable or smaller than skin, ed skin effect. So, induction number is small. One condition, a second. We don't measure electrical field. Electrical field, from my point of view, is forbidden subject, for, forbidden object for measurements. Simply forbidden. Everything what I tried to develop this approach 30 years ago, published many papers, one method was practically killed due to the fact that we forced to measure electrical field. It's magnetotelluric method in exploration geophysics, not deep uh, soundings, but exploration geophysics. Is, it's a practically one reason why it's what was killed, because method is forced to measure the electrical field. Also, inductive excitation. Three, three factors of great importance. 
induction number is small, we don't work with wave zone. Second, we don't measure electrical field. And third, we don't use grounded wire. Three moments in tomorrow, I will try to explain why it's, Im why it's important. So it doesn't mean that methods which are outside of this, um, which do measure electrical field, which are working in large induction numbers, are useless. No. But they cannot be they, this, they cannot be used for separation of targets by conductivity. They could be used for mapping, but not for the most important goal to detect good conductors. So, if we these conditions are met, so he means source is the loop, current loop, not grounded line. Grounded line is trouble instantly. Then what we found out resolution is poor, correct? Here better. Much much better. This is the place of drastical improvements. Usually several times, sometimes order. But this is the moment where we have a jump in improvement. Here also strong improvement with respect to DC method. So here we have much better. Here slightly better, slightly better, maybe 50%, sometimes twice. Don't for, let us pay attention. I don't know how to say clearly. If anomaly twice useful ratio between useful signal and noise twice, doesn't mean depth investigation increases greatly. It's easy to check. It's only slightly. Because full of transient Sounds. Sounds. Uh, let me do the following. Let me do the following. Uh, let us consider first of all uniform half space. It turns out. There is no difference for uniform space or uniform half space. Formals practically the same. Practically. Let me show you graphs. And first of all, uniform half space. Just a second. Can I show? So let us consider first model, first model, uniform half space, typo, I will explain how it works for loop, that's rho, let us call it rho 1, that's distance, and let us consider only electrical field. Then electrical field has only phi component. So E phi equal E equal minus three M rho divided two pi R four and times some function E phi, which I am going to show you. It's function which depends on tau over R. Now if I know electrical field, so I'm trying to use all time dipole. If you know electrical field, multiply by 2 pi r, 2 pi r, and then what you will get? 
electromotive force. So electromotive force equal minus 3m rho divide r cube times some function t over tau tau over r. Now, where tau equal square root, again, 2 pi rho 1, t, n, 7. Here I will write rho 1. So that's electromotive force, which introduced in the circle, in the circle, due to magnetic field. It's exactly the same as vice versa. Here there is a current. And here you measure, measure electromotive force. No difference. So these formulas could be simultaneously used for magnetic dipole, electrical field, and loop measurements on the center. Now let me show you graph of a tau over r. Graph of electric field has very simple behavior, extremely simple behavior. Uh, it's around 2. So when parameter tau over r much less than 2, it's <coughs> almost early stage. Let us write formulas for early stage. At early stage, electrical field is equal minus 3m rho 1 divided 2 pi r4. Let us stop here and discuss. I will not write expression for magnetic field, but we don't need it. So, when time is small, it turns out that electrical field directly proportional resistivity and very, very quickly, very quickly decreases with distance. Very quick. Unit divide R4. Then, with time, due to diffusion, due to transformation electromagnetic energy into heat, it goes down, 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 down. Now, what happens at late stage? That's behavior of the field on the Earth's surface. Very simple. I hope I told you so many times you understand what happens inside. At the first moment, induced currents arise near surface. Then it goes down, down, down. They decrease. The, not the same currents I explained a couple days ago, but simply induced currents arise at different depths at different times. Now, and therefore, Hill goes, goes down. When we are far, far, currents far, far away, we have late stage. One of the expression for late stage uniform half space is mu omo, 5 gamma 1 minus 3 half r moment divide 40 pi pi square pi t 5 2. Magnetic field decays unit divide T3 half. Electrical field derivatives 5 over 2. That's Duncan already, I think, he wrote. So, how to find this old function? He also showed relatively simple expression. For electrical field, it's elementary functions. If vertical component and horizontal component, a little different, especially different, especially for a horizontal component. Now, let me consider another behavior, another model for behavior of the field. the beginning, I will show you simply different behavior of the field at different models. (laughs) 
Suppose we have thin sheet dipole, dipole and thin plate with conductance S. Let us take X is Z. That's H. That's only not dipole, but loop. I don't know why. Loop with radius R, current I. And let us find out expression for the field at the center of this loop. This is a very special case when you don't need to integrate, you don't, you don't need to in perform integration, there is no any special functions. So every f elementary functions, very, by the way, very useful case because it's overburdened. So electromotive force which arises in silver, if you have loop, is equal moment receiver, current transmitter, conductance, R square, E3, tau S, H naught, divide by unit tau S plus 2H naught square, tau 5, 2. I will explain you what is what. Is what. H naught equal distance of the loop to the thin conductor divided by radius. Tau S is equal to T divided mu S R. Now, <coughs> very interesting model I would say this model was one of the leading reason this model, not this case, but this model, model of thin conducting layer, was one of the leading reasons of introduction transient soundings is near zone. I will explain a little later. So let us consider this graph. If you understand uh, uh, all notation. So S conductance. Conductance it means gamma times D, D thickness. That's conductance. It's called longitudinal conductance. Moment receiver distance. So everything should be clear. Now what we have from this expression? Let us look. If time is small, tends to zero, what happens with this expression? Tau s goes to zero, tau s goes zero, and tau result depends only hmm, geometry and inverse proportion conduct. Correct? But what is important? Geometry. Now, let us consider more important case. Suppose parameter tau s greater than 2H naught and greater than a unit. Then it's a simple matter to see the following. This term is small, here tau s, here tau s square, tau s in power 5, true? Tau s in power 5, here tau s 1, unit divide tau s 4, so it looks like electromotive force inverse proportional tau s, power 4. If we write expression for the field, we will see. Let us write down. Electromotive force equal moment receiver, current s, r square, and tau s4. 16, only we have to write in the denominator. That's a small difference. So we have to write 16, tau 4, here mu 4, S4, R4. Four. So 
what is important, electromotive force, is proportional as cube. Now, just a second. If it's proportional as cube, we have amazingly high sensitivity to conductance. Amazingly high sensitivity to conductance. There is no method in geophysics, electromagnetic methods, has such extremal conductance, sensitivity conductance, that this method. For instance, for instance, If we take Schlumberger soundings, A, M, and <coughs> B, M, N, voltage. If we have medium resistivity rho, here insulator, what happens when separation is very large? Huh? Inverse proportional to first power of conductance. If separation is large, if it's insulator, if it's insulator, you will find out that apparent resistivity inverse proportional first power of <coughs> conductance. If you take magnetotelluric method, magnetotelluric method, where you measure electrical field and magnetic field, it turns out impedance inverse proportional to conductance at low frequency part of spectrum. But instead of first power S, our electromotive force turns out proportional as cube. What does it mean? It means if you have, for example, you mapping basement, you would like to know depth to the basement. If there is a small change of thickness it results small change of conductance. For example, 30% of change of thickness, large structure, gives you 30% of change of apparent resistivity, first of all voltage, and then apparent resistivity. In this case, what would be change if you have, let us say, 20%? 30 too much. 20. Suppose thickness change 20%. Hmm? You understand my question? Mm -hmm. hmm? <coughs> hmm? Sorry? So again, you have depth, for example, one kilometer, one kilometer, one kilometer. Now, um, instead of one kilometer, in some another place, you have 800 meters. Conductance is decreases 20%. So voltage in Magnet voltage in DC Schlumberger will change 20% because for proper range of separation signal is inverse proportional to <coughs> conductance. My question is in time domain what would be change?
Hmm? Huh? We are talking change 20 percent, 15 percent, 30 percent. You have quantity unit plus x cube. If x is small, 0 0.2. 20% it means 0 0.2 with respect to 1. So what would happen? Not a lot. But it, it will be difference, essential difference with respect to Schlumberger and magnetotelluric. What approximately, the, what is the approximate expression for Unit plus, huh? Mm hmm. Three x. If x is small, that's the result. For instance, unit plus x power one half. What is it? Unit one half. Etc. 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 So, of course, unfortunately, not two hundred percent, not to etc. 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 But only instead of twenty percent anomaly, we will have sixty percent. That's a lot. It's a lot. It's almost. It's taking into account presence of geological noise, and etc. Of course, we are very much interested in getting high anomalies. So it's not, it's, not pure, it's not pure mathematics. We are looking for quantities which are more sensitive to conductivity or conductance. So when it was discovered, instantly, before developing theory, already uh, equipment for what trains and sounds in near zone was started to be developed was at 70s. And I will show one example, which is extremely, became classical example, extremely interesting practical point of view. So now let us consider more complicated case. Suppose we have two layer medium. And again, loop, measurement center, or two dipoles, doesn't matter. What would be behavior of the field? It's for us, it's now, it's only important general pictures. First of all, at the first moment, currents will be near transmit. Some are here, near surface. So we will have early stage, which was described by this expression. Then field starts to decay. What is interesting? That reminds our should remind you our conversation about casing. There is a range of time when field depends only rho 1. Then car here current starts to be weaker, weaker, weaker. They don't move. The amplitude of them decay, decay, decay. Then there is a moment when we start to feel medium with resistivity rho 2. That's the period range of time when we will have we will get inform we can in principle get information about row one and thickness because it's important what is the resistivity here. Then with increasing time later, current starts to appear where? Here. But this current will decay. 
So, and it will be a moment when this layer becomes transparent. Completely. As we didn't have this layer. And separation is not important because our generators located deeper, deeper, deeper. This is the concept of trains and soundings in near zone. Now, uh, what would be expression for field at the beginning? It will be described by this formula. What would be the expression of the field when currents very deep? By this expression, but on, instead of gamma 1, I have to put gamma 2. So simply a last layer. So left and right uh, uh, asymptote of transient response is known as soon as know, you know model of uniform half space. <coughs> That's the principle of transient sound. Now, it turns out all curves, all curves are similar, very similar. Practically similar. There are some small deviations, but all of them start from straight horizontal line corresponding early stage. Then they go down and decay one or another degree, but and then always in the same manner. Now, if we have horizontal layer medium doesn't matter, in principle, doesn't matter. Finally, we will get resistivity in principle of the last layer. Why I say in principle? Maybe it's too thick, it's upper part, too conductive. If we don't, we will not have simply signal to measure. But finally, regardless of our receivers, currents, mainly appear here. This is main idea. Now, in order to make it clear, let me, before I start to discuss apparent resistivity curves, let me tell you something about transition from this method, from Schlumberger soundings to transient soundings in near zone. Before 1950, around 1950, the main method in oil exploration, by the way, sounding came from oil exploration to mining. That's how it happened. How it happened. The main method was Schlumberger sound. Measurements with different separation. That was true, I would say, the middle of 40, 40s, end of the 40s. Then, as I told you last time, Kanyar suggested magnetotelluric sound. Both methods had the same basis. Me you would like go deeper, measure far away. Because all magnetotelluric soundings were based on measurements only far away. Having these two methods, having these two methods, in the middle of 50s, geophysicists offer one method in so-called frequency sound. Tomorrow I will explain you why frequency soundings didn't get, didn't become popular, but it was a period of extreme popularity of this method. Remembering Schlumberger soundings, remembering magnetotelluric, geophysicists offer the following method. Grounded line. Far, far, far away, 
far, far away. What does that mean, far away? If it's a basement, sediments, three, five kilometers, separation always were at least 15, 20 kilometers. That's transmi transmitter, that's receiver. And measurements were performed with amplitude and phase. So we measure amplitude response and phase response. So please imagine such a large separation, powerful transmitter, distance, this distance. And goal was to obtain <coughs> to obtain frequency responses and get information about geoelectrical section in sediments. Now, if the hope was, if there are structures, they will be detected. And 50s, it was reasonable to do it because sometimes the purpose was regional mapping of anticline, syncline, larger scale. But taking into account the distance between transmitter receiver very large, very large, you cannot say that you perform soundings beneath receiver. Because here transmitter, let's be honest, we measure one frequency response covering for Schlumberger sounding this area and for frequency soundings, this large area, 10, 15 kilometers, <coughs> such resolution would be not, of course, quickly become unexpected, un uh, acceptable by industry. So again, measurements perform at this point, then again a long profile, again, again, and again. Then, then, it was third step. Why we have to use frequency response? Let us measure time response. So instead of frequency generator, it was step function excitation. And that was last step before transient sounding senior zone. This method as industrial, not research, not university, as industrial, existed around 10 years, 5, 10 years. Then around several years, time domain. So time domain was not invented instant. It was transient soundings. By no means it's a beginning of transient soundings. It was something very clever before. And this clever before, it was transient soundings with very large separations. It was possible to measure. We didn't need to measure phase. So it was much simpler. However, again, industry didn't accept this approach. And during several years, I'm talking about uh, oil exploration, because mining uh, industry didn't know anything about soundings up to a certain moment. So that was the last stage, transient sounding, before this appro approach about which I am talking. But what is important, in all previous stages, requirement, large separation with respect to depth was vital. Geophysicists thought it's vital. It was not important, but that's how we and then in 70 was suggested method about which I'm going to speak a little more. So let us make break here.